Hi everyone, we are live once again today and um, I'm really excited to have the opportunity to talk to you guys each day this week as we kind of get excited and hopefully I can inspire many of you to either start your vegan business or for many of you who've already started, already jumped in, hopefully some of the things that we talk about this week will really inspire you to go to that next level. So I'm really excited for the people who've been joining. Looks like we have someone already joined today. So welcome, welcome, welcome back. Nice to see you. And what I wanna do today is talk about that feeling of being stuck. Feeling like you don't know if you should move forward, what you should do next. And the reason I wanted to kind of dedicate a topic for our live session to that topic is because I find in my coaching business, about 80 to 90 percent of the people that i work with we always have a session about this about this feeling and one thing i want to kind of put out there is that everyone gets stuck and i think people assume that it's just in the early stages especially for many of you who may be starting your business and you get that stuck feeling I want you to realize that that's a part of running a business, that many of us hit roadblocks, many of us hit speed bumps. And a lot of that is because what we're doing is creating something, we're building something, we're reaching out to the world and connecting. And because of that creative space that we're in, we're gonna come up with some good ideas, we're gonna come up with some okay ideas at times, and we have to test them in the market. We have to try things out. And because we're in that land of trying, testing, collaborating, growing, and motivating and moving forward, what happens is you are gonna have some adversity. So I want you to get used to that feeling. I want you to embrace it. And when I say embrace it, meaning understand that it is natural for you to feel stuck so that you don't shame yourself when you feel that way. So you don't put yourself down when you start to feel a little bit stuck. What I want you to do over time is get stuck less and less. I want you to get stuck for shorter periods of time. I know some people who get stuck for hours, some people get stuck for days, some people get stuck for weeks. And what we ultimately want to do is be able to shrink that down because yes, you will get stuck, but we never want it to go on and on and on. So what I want you to do is start thinking about and creating a ritual that can help you get unstuck. This is what's worked really well for me because I have to admit, I get stuck all the time. I'm always coming up with these new ideas and things I wanna do and things maybe don't work out like I thought it was going to be. Or what happens is I created this grand plan and then I realize I don't have time to implement this. What am I gonna do? So I have to sit back and what I tend to do is write it down. I get it out of my head. I can't tell you how many people will benefit by getting an idea out of your head and on paper. And when I mean on paper, I don't mean written up like it's a blog post or written up like it's an article. I mean just getting it out, almost like it's just <laughs> coming right on out and writing it on a whiteboard, writing it on a piece of paper. Sometimes it's even drawing it out. If you've ever seen any of my notes, my notes have bubbles and lines and I just kind of write down what I'm thinking. And then what I'll do is I'll write down what my thought is and then I'll write down what is keeping me stuck. Is it fear? Is it worry? Is it time? Is it understanding, meaning I don't have the information I need to move forward? Am I starting to diagnose and find out what is keeping me from getting stuck can help me sometimes find my solution. If I'm feeling like I'm stressed out, so I know I need to get all these things done, but I'm stuck because I'm stressed, then I have a ritual that will help me de-stress. So if you are a person that tends to get a little stressful at times, I want you to create a ritual around it. Whether you do yoga, whether you jump on Netflix and watch like a 30 minute um, a special, a comic special, whether you're a person that needs to go outside and take a walk, or maybe you need to go make a phone call, call someone, call a friend, or can connect with someone. Figure out what your ritual is so that you can de-stress. Now, if you're feeling stuck because you don't know something, you need that information, my ritual is to join a webinar. I always look online when I'm looking for something and I'll just do a search. I'll search for webinars or because I tend to follow specific accounts that I really, really like, what I'll do is I'll go through my email because those emails are just always coming through and I'll look to see if anyone had any recent webinars, any recent events, and maybe I can watch the replay. 
And that way, what I can do is get the knowledge that I need to move forward. So all this is about is creating the lanes that can help you kind of go around that speed bump <laughs> or resolve that roadblock that you're hitting. So what I want you to do in, I guess I recommend, is thinking about your ritual. If you're not sure and it's too hard to create one, the next time you have a roadblock, sit down and create one. Make sure you sit down and say if it's a fear. If it's a fear, you may have to talk to someone. What I love to do is having a partner, someone I can talk to when I need to get out of my head. Sometimes that's a colleague, sometimes my poor husband has to be the person as well. And what I can do is I can say to him and kind of throw how I'm feeling. I can get that emotion out and then he can objectively respond to me in saying, that emotion is not valid, Stephanie. <laughs> he can respond to me, hey, good to see you, veg feed date. <laughs> you know, he can respond to me and say, hey, Steph, why do you feel that way when you've done this five times before? And what happens is he can give me a perspective. When I have a colleague that I reach out to, I'll let them know, hey, I'm worried about this, or I'm concerned about this, or I haven't resolved that. And then they can objectively say, that may not be a valid concern because of A, B, and C, or they can give me a recommendation on what they've done before. So I highly recommend having someone who can be a little bit of your sounding board, but it has to be someone who can talk to you very objectively. Now, I'm lucky that my husband will say anything he thinks, and I really love that, <laughs> but not everyone wants that in their relationship, so I completely understand. Finding a colleague and partner is a great way to do it, and I use tools like LinkedIn to find people that I can work with and collaborate with when I'm having these challenges or having these roadblocks. And then the final thing, like I said, is sometimes getting away from the computer, taking a break, taking a 15, 20 minute, 30 minute break, whether it's a walk, whether it's yoga, whatever is your thing. I'm really into spin classes lately. That's been my like really fun activity and also a great way for me to take a break and refresh. So I really highly recommend that you find yours. All right, so that's number one on getting stuck. The other thing around getting stuck is making sure you have a good balance between the plans and following them. Now, I'm a big planner when it comes to putting things in place for my business. I sit down, I look at the entire 12 months, and I actually say, what do I want to do when? Now, I break things up into each month and saying, okay, what is my objective for that month? What experience do I want to have for my customers, my clients, my team? How do I want to grow? What things do I want to try? And I literally sit with a blank sheet of paper and then just start writing things out, scratching it out, moving it to different months. Then I go to a whiteboard. I have a whiteboard calendar that I use and I write in all the dates, look at everything and say, oh, I don't wanna do a newsletter here. These are the dates I wanna have open for speaking engagements. These are when I wanna do webinars. And I literally put all that stuff on paper. Now I know for some people, 12 months sounds like insane, but it's really not as hard as you think. When you start to organize your business, when you start to realize when you do what, meaning how often are you doing social media posts? How often are you doing newsletters? How often do you wanna do speaking engagements? Because most of the speaking engagements, the events are booked in it a year in advance, so you know what those dates are that you want to do if you're gonna do the Earth Day or Veg Fest or any of those things. So writing those down, putting them on paper, and starting to put a plan in place can help you get unstuck. And the reason I say this is for many people, when they don't know what to do next, it's because they haven't really thought through the next 30 days, 60 days, 90 days. Instead, they're kind of waking up in the moment. They're kind of waking up and trying to decide, what should I work on? What should I do? What should be my priority? And when you make those decisions in the moment, when you make those decisions when you have pressure on you, deadlines, emails flying at you, maybe a promotion or a campaign you're in the middle of, it can feel very stressful. It can be hard to make a strong and great decision. So instead, I like to pull my planning out outside of those windows of me daily managing my business. So I do it in December, January of each year. And then what I do is I put an operational rhythm in place. I literally sit down every three months and look at my plan and say, how am I doing? Am I on course? Do I like what I'm doing? Are the plans that I put in place make sense? Or the plans that I put in place, are they really gonna get me where I thought I was gonna go? Because for some of us, we get stuck because we create a plan 
It's not working the way we thought. So then we just like pump the brakes super hard and just stop. We just stop and freeze. And what I don't want you to do is stop and freeze. What I want you to be able to do is look at those plans and start to realize that you have to have the courage and the strength to know everything you plan may not go as planned. It doesn't mean you have a bad plan. Remember, the plan is really helping you chart your course. It's not a crystal ball. It's no way for you to know the future. Well, I shouldn't say no way because I just don't have those skills. So I should speak for myself. But without understanding or seeing the future, there's no way for you to say exactly what's going to happen. Instead, what these goals are designed for is to help you stay on the path, help you stay really and keep you kind of from going completely out of bounds. So by having a rhythm in place, whether it's quarterly or whether it's monthly, re-looking at your plans, re-evaluating your plans and making changes to those plans, they can stay current, they can keep you from hitting the brakes and feeling stuck, and they can give you the freedom to make the changes as more information is known, as success comes your way, and as the things that you dreamed of start to come true. So what I'm hoping today is maybe I've given you a little inspiration. Maybe I've given you a little bit of a nudge on how to move forward. I'm hoping today, if you feel stuck this week, if you've been feeling stuck at all today, what you can do is use some of these tips to help you get there. And anytime you start to have a challenge with your plan, never throw it in the trash. Never say what you worked on didn't work or don't berate yourself. What I want you to do is take the plan that you have, look at it and optimize it, fix it, make it better. I always want you to build from what you've worked on and done. So spend the time this week, today, and look at what your plan is. Look at what you're working on. If you don't have a plan, then this is time for you to put a plan in place, at least for the next 90 days, if 12 months is too much for you, so you can start to either get back on course, move forward, and start to use those routines that I mentioned earlier to ensure that when you feel stuck, you're able to eventually speed past that roadblock or go over that speed bump with ease. All right? If you have any questions about anything that I talked about today, feel free to post it down in the comments, depending on if you're on Facebook or Instagram watching this. You can always email us as well. I got some great emails yesterday for people who were talking about their why and their passion and why they created their business. So thank you for those emails. And as always, you can jump on any of our social media platforms and let us know how your business is going, what your journey is like, and how you've maybe used some of the recommendations from today to help you get unstuck. All right, it's great seeing everybody. Goodbye.